Milk. Crate. Marauder. Pat Cooper's on the phone. Hey, Pat. How are you? How are you, man? Listen, what's going on? Good to hear from you, by the way. I love you. By the way, the guy in the wheelchair, the president's lawyer, is Charles Ruff. Yes. That's his name. Didn't okay. he, hey, hey, Pat, you must have read that. You you read a lot of stuff. Didn't that guy lose his legs? Who? The Pat, uh, the Charles Ruff? I don't know. No, 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 no. I, I, he, he had some kind of a disease. You mean that the lawyer? Yeah, but didn't he get the disease like overseas? He was yes, 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 yes. Yeah, where, where was he? Who the hell? Probably the Yucatan. Who the hell knows? Yeah, right, Yucatan. <laughs> Where's that? I, I knew Pat would know that. <laughs> All right, listen. What? Uh, you're, you know, I'm listening to this one. This young gentleman, this comedian you just had on. Bob Schimmel. Yeah, it seems like a nice guy. You tell Bob, don't feel bad. They put Richard Belz's name in the, you know, in the voting that he wasn't even on the show. What do you mean? In other words, I was on the Drew Carey roast. Right, do you agree on that? Well, beside the point, but I'm bringing the point out so that this guy shouldn't feel bad. And you know I love Richard Belzer personally and professionally. Right. But they put him as one of the guys, one of the funniest guys on that particular show. He was never there. He wasn't even on the show. That's right. So yeah, meanwhile, they sent out voting, and they had Richard Belzer as one of the best comics on the Drew Carey show. He wasn't even there. And were you, are you nominated? No, me. I don't get nominated for, 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 for broccoli. Well, 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 everybody go to ComedyCentral.com and write in Pat Cooper. No, I don't want that. I, no. Howard. Howard. Oh, come on. Yes. Howard. How could that? You were the funniest guy on there. We know that, but that's beside the point. You're dealing with nothing. You know what? Uh, you know, that Slater guy runs this thing. He said, well, it must have been an error. I said, no, that's no error. That's a lot of cons. Did you call the guy? Well, well, you know, I had a buddy of mine call him, and, and Slater said, well, it must have been a typographical error. I said, your ass was a typographical error. Oh, come on. <laughs> How dare, no. yeah. How dare you? Pat, isn't it, isn't it George Slaughter? Yeah, Slaughter, Slaughter, who the hell cares? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that ain't right. Yeah. That, that's not right. No, Pat, I want this guy to understand that this is all politics. They don't go for the best. They go for who they like. Kind Comedy Central takes care of their own people. Right, they give awards to who they think the people want to see on the award show. Listen, we've had some good people on that show where they weren't even nominated. Not right. That's a disgrace. Oh, uh, that's wrong, man. But that's okay. I don't look for awards because my award is when I'm doing great. They all go kiss my ass. I hear you. Anyway, you'd be well have a safe trip. Where are you appearing these days? I'm going to be, I, I sold out Foxwood Saturday night, and you tell uh, Jack Martling that Westbury, I've worked it a hundred times, one of the finest theaters in the, in the world. Right. He's going to have a great time. You have a safe trip, buddy. Hey, thanks. Stay angry. <laughs> this is one of my good mornings. <laughs> Hi, Cooper. Hey, 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 listen, uh, Robin. Yes. Don't worry about it. Yesterday's over. Oh, it's, right. not, it's, yeah. it's over for me. It's not over Howard. Yeah. Don't, don't bring me into it. Listen to me. It's over. I'm he brings it up every Even Pat sees some, Pat sees some anger in you. Pat sees some anger. I see anger in, I see anger in the Pope. Was that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pat, thanks, man. <laughs> Love you too, man. I think Mother Teresa was an angry woman. Right. Pat never felt up his kids, I'll tell you that. Oh, he never got near him. <laughs> <laughs> his wife had a restraining order. <laughs> He's great, man. He never lived in the same house. Pat Cooper. A lot of anger there. Talk about anger. I wonder if Pat's ever been in therapy. Oh, no. Are you kidding? Imagine. I'd be scared. That's a show. Really? There's a, there's a therapist who's out of town every week. My father never did nothing. I don't care, though. Well, it sounds like you care. I don't I care. 90. I make 90, they I take 40. <laughs> Pat Cooper yells at his breakfast. I right, listen. play word association. They can't come up with one word. That make <laughs> All right, we got to take a break, Robin. When we come back, um, we have news for you. I have a couple of tapes we got to play for you. A lot of stuff still on this show. We'll be back right after. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Who is this? Uh -huh. Rob, go ahead. You there? Oh, whoops. Rob, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Good morning uh, to the king of all media and the queen of all Schwarzen. Oh, that's ridiculous. Howard, I was in Boston last week, and I was walking down Newberry Street, and I saw a small crowd of people. I went over, and it was Richard Simmons with some yet the uh, his agent or publicist having lunch out at a cafe. So people are asking questions, and uh, I yell out, uh, Richard, what are you going to patch things up with Howard and reappear on the show? We miss you. And he goes into this whole explanation about how you... Uh, disappointed him by not taking him to Prince of Tides and how he, he named one of your kids. I think it was Ashley. Howard, he started to cry. I mean, it wasn't falling, but his eyes, you could see they were getting red and his voice was cracking. He said uh, he, he chose furniture for your house. You were mean and nasty to him. It's he a lie. Furniture for your house? It's a lie. He said you were mean and nasty to him last time he... he was, he, was he didn't name my kid. He said, hey, you know what's a nice name, Ashley? I mean, it's not like he thought of the name. It's not like he named my kid, you know, 
you know, Kelvar one. <laughs> he made it sound as if he's the the, the well. Listen, behind. Obviously, he still remembers the Prince of Ties thing. I mean, obviously, he is as close to a mental patient as a human being can come without being locked up. You, you know what's incredible? The power he gets so worked up about a movie. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, he stopped doing my show because I no longer need. He no longer needed me. He's a liar. The power of celebrity never ceases to amaze me. I mean, if this guy worked at Dwayne Reed or UPS, he'd be laughed at all day. Right. I mean, he's a white guy with an afro. He's wearing everything but a pink tutu. Right. And he, he makes Mark Harris look like he's part of the Teamsters Union. He's so effeminate. I know. He's a freak show. Not he's a chance. freak show. And if that guy was at work, they would goof on him until he shot everyone in the place. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> till he went postal. Yeah. He's cruel. <laughs> to the up up like cruel. He's cruel. I'm sorry, what? The crowd was looking at him like he was Jesus Christ. Right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Howard. It is true. Celebrity is a funny thing, you know. Even me, the way I walk around. People would stone me <laughs> the way I look. <laughs> if you didn't have a celebrity. If I didn't have celebrity. It's a very odd thing. You know, we have some great guests here for you today. Pat Cooper is here, who I love. Guy's so funny. Uh, you know, he's... That must be some green room. Are they all in there together? Yeah, Mark Harris is in there, too. <laughs> who told you that? But I want to bring in Pat first. Yeah. Who told you that? And there's some guy out there who just showed up who swears he's living with Jesus Christ. Who told you that? And believes it. <laughs> who told you that? He didn't bring Jesus with him. Yes, we can call Jesus. <laughs> who told you that? You can call Jesus Christ. Who would like to do that? There he is. There's Pat Cooper right Anytime there. Anytime you want to come on the show, Pat Cooper off the street, walk off. Right. Who from Minnesota who, who said, I Sit hit down. the microphone in the background. What is he talking about? He's crazy. We had a we, we switched his day around that he had to come in because we wanted to... You had this guy come from Minnesota. No, and what, that wasn't voice. why we bumped you. I can't hear your voice across the street, Howard. Give me a break. <laughs> All these guys. What's happening to your show? I, I don't know. What is happening? I mean, you've got guests on here that don't make any sense. Wait, the insane clown posse? you got to it's, it's getting to a point. I says, where's this guy digging? You're thinking, how come I can't hear you in here? These, you don't hear the headphones? I, thank there's God. A, there's you, a you, control there somewhere. Hiya, baby. Uh, how are you? Yeah, can, can you hear? Can, I get taller. Oh. Can you hear Robin in the headphones? No. You can't? No. No. That's okay. What's the difference? Hey, if you can bump me, I'll come back next week. No, I would like you. I would like you to be able to hear, but he I have the volume control there, and he has to find. Yeah, there is a volume control. Yeah, it's a volume right. control on your fuzzles. I got to tell you something. It is so disappointing to me the technical <laughs> aspect of this show. Is it even plugged in? I wonder. I wonder too. Here comes Gary to help, though. Help him out, Bubba Boo. I got it. All right, now you're okay? Yeah. You hear me? He is, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with your show. It's just that some of the people you put on here are just boring. Well, I, I he thought, thought he was bumped because of the guy who thought he heard you talking. He wasn't bumped for that reason. He I wasn't. switched him around yeah. for a reason that is beyond him. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. you, you wouldn't understand. Why do you bump a guy that's not supposed to be bumped? What I'll do you care anybody. what day? I put you on a better day. I don't want all. a better day. I want to go when I was supposed to go on. I had things on my mind to tell. Now I forgot what I was supposed to tell you. <laughs> now you have nothing to say. Yeah, I got plenty to say. <laughs> right. So what do you, what do you, uh, what, 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 does it upset you when I switch the no, day? You're supposed I, to be, I, you don't care. What do you care? Don't even come in here acting like that. I just something. I don't want you to go senile on me. I thought, me, I could never go senile. Right, you could. You're getting to the age. How old are you now? I'll be 70 in July. Really? Yes, you sir. could be going senile soon, right? No, sir. No I'm way. better. Really? Get better, pal. Get I got to tell you yeah. something about you. Yeah. You look young. I hate you. Does. You don't look 70. I will never look 70. He is no. father's Never look 70. I want to satisfaction. My father's 75. Yeah. So he's a contemporary of your father, and yeah, your my father looks so much older. He does he? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I had a guy turn around time was 57, looked like about 80. But that's that's not my thing. It's just living the way you're supposed to live, and you don't crossbreed food. What you is never it? crossbreed food. What do you mean by that? In other words, an Italian has an Italian intestines. Right. And the sand, so they don't want need no tacos. They don't want none of that down there. Right. If I had a taco, my ass would lock. So you only eat Italian? Food. Is that I you're telling Italian us? food, what I'm supposed to do. I sleep when I'm supposed to. My body says you're tired, go to sleep. Right. And that's it. You don't step out of your realm. You step out of your realm and you're in big trouble. What is going on in our world? Maybe you could help clear this up. What is going on? The world seems to be getting crazier and crazier. You take guys, I'll give you an example. You take guys like an entertainer like Steve Allen. Yeah. Who was an entertainer at some point. He used to make people laugh yeah. on TV. He was not a comic. He doesn't really have a stand-up comic like you having a tremendous ability right. to go on a stage and make people laugh. Right. He would go on TV and say a few funny things right. or something and be in a sketch. Right. Or but something. mostly he liked comedians. Yeah. He'd bring them up. Well, it's the same with Bob Hope. They don't want to quit. They don't want to know it's over. They right. Shove it there. whatever they got bent down people's throat. And then they wonder why the children don't respect them because they don't have respect for themselves. When it's over, quit. And that's the end of it. But it's, it's well, even like at least, at least Bob Hope yeah. had an act at some point. Yeah. Steve Allen 
Stallone now, so his act seems to be criticizing, let's say, me as it's television. Right. Isn't that kind of sad? It's, it's not sad. It's still, instead of contributing, he's trying to take away, and he's wrong. Right. right. He should mind his business. Life is different. Things change. Music change. Accept it. But, right. Pat, but they don't want it. They can't handle it. Yeah, he's like, yes. Pat, how do you know when it's over? I mean, obviously. I will go. know. Uh, let me tell you something. Okay. I, I did a show last night at Caesars. You know, I work on a Mondays or Tuesday. Okay. For Mel Weiss, a great lawyer. Right. Okay. I went on that stage. You have to add the kids around. If I couldn't handle that, I would quit tomorrow. People uh, laugh at you still. I would quit. Right. Because I have a comedic mind to turn around off the top of my head and ad lib. Right. I would quit. Right. You understand? Right. These guys will be 90, 94, 95. They're still looking for a series. Like I know even though Henny Youngman's dead, at the, at the time of his death, he was still going on stage in, in a wheelchair. wheelchair. That's right. terrible. You didn't like that. I, I thought it was a guy. First of all, it was disrespectful to the audience. Right. How dare you come out? What am I? What, what is this? A hospital ward? <laughs> Pryor. I mean, he Richard Pryor, listen, Richard Pryor is, is his own worst enemy. Richard Pryor's been trying to die for 30 years. Right. I went on the roast, and the first thing I said to him on the roast is, when are you going to die, Richard? Let's get, in, get this thing over with. <laughs> you know, and they scream. They, they, scream. they love that. Because he's, a, he's right. got a great sense of humor. The right. Pryor's got a great sense of humor. Right. You know? right. But these people don't understand. You've got to rehearse laying down. <laughs> right. You've got to rehearse Some people laying. should go away, you say. Not go away. They have enough they money. Down. They could go. They, they could down. retire play golf. Once a month, I rehearse dying. I right. on the couch, I cross my hands, and I go, that no, You feel that you are still relevant, you have a career, I you're making people... I have been phone in 30 years for right. a job. People... What am I going to turn around? I'm still doing your show. Right, people are booking you, you I have a, a relevant right. career. A lot of these guys, really, it's past their prime. Let me ask you another question. Right, I got right. no PR people, I get more press than anybody. Right. I got my own TV show going on. Yeah, what is that? that? What are you talking oh, about? I'm full around, pal. I'm big. I'm right. big. No, what is going on with you? I'm, on, I'm, on a, I'm, I'm doing a host of a game show called Classic movie tone news. Right. I gotta say classic because Marvin the director gets nervous and Jack gets You have your own television show. Yeah, it starts Saturday. And it's a game show. Yeah. And you're the host. Yeah, but you know, it's, you know what it is? It's wonderful nervous breakdown. Right. I got no audience. I get two guests in an hour and I got to ad lip for a lawyer. And do they pay you well for this? What do you want to get paid for? They don't no. pay you well. So you, you don't get paid? No, get, absolutely you get paid. You do. But, but it, it, it's not that people say, gee, you must be making millions. Right. Now, here's the secret. When you got a show of your own like that, or I get anything. I got a thing called Manja Manja. It's a, it's a talk show. I mean, it's a cook show. Right. You don't raise your price and get Where are these shows? Why do I never see Come on, give me a chance. All right, okay. All right, all right. I'm doing a book called The Bodyguard's Bodyguard. How's that grab you? And what is that about? It's about a bodyguard. It was a bodyguard for the bodyguard. And it's never been written like that. So and you I wrote it. He wrote it in a, a no, novel form. In front of my Tony Del Vecchio. It's gonna be a great book. A Is great it a book. spoof or no? No, it's a story about a guy who was bodyguard and the bodyguard. So you're hotter than ever. Is what you're saying. He's How it, maybe explain something else to me because you you understand show business and you understand certain people's mentality. I always see you as a good reader of people. Right. Now explain Jackie Martling to me. Oh, I'm okay. glad you're. No, 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 no. Let me ask you this question because this this happened during the week and maybe you could straighten it out. Okay. All right. Jackie always wanted to appear at a friar's roast. Yes. He wants to go and be a, a friar and be a, on a roast. Okay. And they never let him do it. Okay. So Freddie Roman finally asked Jackie to be on a friar's roast. Mm -hmm. Who was the roast for, Jackie? Freddie, Freddie Roman. Roman. For Freddie Roman. Yeah. He says, would you please do my roast? Jackie said yes. He agreed to go do it. Yeah. And then he thought about it after a couple of weeks. And he called him back and said, I don't want to do it. He's smart. A few days before. Jackie you... Martin was the smartest man on the planet. I told Jackie before I come on this air. Good. Because for me... Freddie Roman, if he's a good friend of Jack Martin, he would have put him in the regular roast, the big roast. Right. But this was like a rehearsal, like Freddie's going to do my favor. says, I'll allow you to do my roast. Right. What else Freddie Roman to ask you what? And first of all, it wasn't a great roast. And second of all, you don't bring the newspaper people in there and they bomb them out. You don't do that. Right. This is a disgrace, okay? And these people are going around and he thinks of us. He's the dean. He's the big, he's the big maven. But how would Jackie ever get any roast? I would, and if I was Jackie's guy to bring him into that, uh, that, that organization, I'd have turned around and said to Kenny Greengrass who runs the I said, Kenny, this man deserves to be on. He's got to be on. He's a funny man. We've had some guys that were terrible on that show. Right. I mean, terrible. But it's politics. It's a game they play. Who you know? And it's a so lot you feel stuff. Jackie was no, right? No, no, Jackie, Jackie was, I didn't go. You wouldn't even go. I didn't go. I didn't go but you're an A-list guy. They bring I, you into all the big rooms. I knew it was a scam from the beginning. Because when it, the minute Freddie Roman turned around, it was Freddie Roman. He had a sign, sold out. I said, give me a chance. We're going to get a chance to get on the phone to make a reservation. But that's the ego these people deal with. And he is the dean, so they're going to turn around and sell out. Right. So he sells out. So what out. happened? Just, you know something? It wasn't a great roast. Everybody that called me told me a bad. It wasn't a great roast. Really? Because you know why? There was envy and jealousy in there. And everybody was trying to become stars. So where are they going to go? Hey, Freddie, it's over. But don't you think Jackie, who uh, hasn't had any roast experience? Maybe he should have gone. If he had gone? No, not that one. Not that one. I would have never went to that one. <laughs> <laughs>
I think Jackie Mountain has a big enough room to go on the big one. What, what? a monkey in here? What no, no, that's Jackie's music. Yeah. <laughs> he has monkey Jackie, music. This is music. Freddie, how are you? <laughs> and what about, uh, you hate Alan King, right? I don't hate him. No, no, let's get one of these things. I don't hate Alan King. Right. I don't understand him. You I recently went uh, off on Alan King yeah. in a New York Observer article. Oh, yeah, did you read that? Was that a great article? Yeah, uh, I, I didn't read the article, but here's what you I didn't heard. Read the no, I didn't read I didn't see you the article. See my I don't read the Yeah, I saw you. You were great. Was I all right? You were great. I mean, I want to make sure, but yeah. stop no, like you don't like me. I may wind up on I, I have you on because I think you're great. <laughs> all right. Let me ask you. Because I'm great? Yeah. yeah. I thought you loved me, Howard. No, I think I you're great. This has nothing to do with love. It has to do with love. Right. Now, you, uh, you'd rather be on for being great than for me loving you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, uh, <laughs> I, nobody loves you. They just think you're great. <laughs> um, so you were opening up for Jim Croce. And isn't he dead? This isn't him recently. Oh, this is a different story I want to ask you about. Jim Croce. Jim Croce was a singer. <laughs> he died and Croce would never speak to you and you still hold a grudge. Is that true? I don't know who Jim Crow is. Time in a bottle? If I could put time in a bottle. I don't know the man. I don't you don't know about that. I, would look I swear you don't know. I would, listen to me. Are these are you know, things I, I read. Never I, don't, him? I don't lie. Why don't you like I Alan King? Lie. Well, I think Alan King at one time was one of the greatest stand-up comics. I agree. And I might tell you something. I thought he was a great monologist. But Alan King, to me, has not contributed what he should. He's a, I think he's a little bitter. I think he's angry at, at, at the young people around today. And I think he's the maven of time. I think he walks around with a cigar. Like him. Steve Allen. He you knows know. everything. Well, no, I, I think he's a little bit better than Steve Allen. Right, right. <laughs> right. right. I don't hate the man. But it just bothers me to say, hey, Allen, with all the great things in here, Ed Sullivan's dead. You're not going to go on no more. Everything is a new world out there. You know, give to these younger people and, 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 and say, hey, I'm the head guy of the Friars. I don't think he contributes anything to the Friars. I don't well, see Doesn't he do Who's that comedy him? festival? <laughs> What, what? You're, you're very consumed with the that's, Friars. That's a, you're no, consumed. No, I'm not. No, no, Alan King is, what is Alan King? The head of the Friars? He's the, he's the abbot. He's the abbot. Yeah. Now, let me tell you. And what does he do? I, is he a, and what, do, what does he specifically do to the I young community? I don't know what. He walks on with a cigar, and he talks to people, he takes a drink, and he waves. What the hell do I know? Right. He feels he's like a king. When Frank Sinatra was the abbot, who, I think Frank Sinatra went to the Friars once in his life. Right. They made him the abbot. Right. Frank Sinatra did more dead than Alan King did alive. Yeah. <laughs> right. You understand me? Right, right. That's what I'm telling you. He doesn't, to me, he's dead. he doesn't have no charm to bring the friars up and to put them on a pedestal where they belong. The friars right now is getting to be an old gas pain. Right. And we need new blood and Alan King should put that into the You're car. saying that Frank Sinatra embraced young people, tried no, to help no, their careers. No, and, and Alan, Alan King, King did, I mean, Frank no, Sinatra Frank did nothing for the friars, but he did more dead than Alan King is doing alive. Now, Alan King should be bringing in new people King, and giving no, young King people a chance. a great organization. Right. There should be some charm. There should be some life out there. There should be some snap in his walk. Right. Even, even Freddie, they walk around like what this become a political machine here that is so stupid here's these guys that don't get paid they kill each other to get the votes right that they were running for presidency right they, they want to be the head of the front and it becomes that's who's going to be on the who's going to be on the roast and who's going to do this and we're going to do a dance for you we're going to do it for that it's clicky right they all get together they all got clicks and if i, I was head of the front i didn't finish go ahead. And here's what hurts me <laughs> right here's what hurts me <laughs> go ahead they turn around we got people in who belong in the fries when not in show business they become our reviewers right. they tell us how we're good or bad right. now you get a doctor i don't go to operating room so you didn't take out the appendix right right but they become mavens right and alan king should turn around and say stop it this is a show business organization first you guys are second and third otherwise there's the, what are you playing here it should be the one oh. place it should be the one place that where a performer can go and not be judged thank so you. much thank you they should have a a, 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 a camaraderie but freddie roma when he had the roast they had the times come in there and they were going to the comedy they were going to make a big thing out of it and you know something it's wrong right it's wrong why is freddie roma better than anybody in that place why don't they roast me Mickey Freeman. And why don't they roast out of Pisupi Sands and people yeah. are in the trenches here? Right. Why is Freddie Roman better than anybody? I'm not better than anybody. And maybe I have a bigger name than Freddie. Freddie turned around off me three days for piss, piss money. Right. Now you see, you insult me. I got my own TV show. I got ads in the paper. I got stories. What do you want? He wants to split the money with me. Right. Who are you to split the money with me? Who knows you? You should tell Who him. Who knows you? Right. Outside of Delancey Street, you got a problem. It's true. You're, you have a name. Right. You can't tell that to Freddie. Right. Freddie thinks he walks around that he's Freddie Roman. And I don't hate him. So a lot of these guys, these old dinosaurs at the front. Friars Club walk around like they're big shots. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. They walk around like they're big shots. They smoke cigars and everything. Yeah. But we, there's more than just the, the Friars and walking around in they're a club. Big shots to each other. No right. No in other words, you could get anymore. involved or be be, a, be elevate the Friars. Everybody wants credit. Say, oh, I did that show last time. I did that show two weeks ago. That's who cares? You got to do the show for the for, for the club. Here's what kissed me off. You want to go kiss me off? Yeah. I did CNN. Wait a minute. That's all right. That's all right. I did CNN Friday. Yeah. CNN. 
How big can I get? Who they wanted kill? me to talk about the fryer. So what happens? Why do they want to talk Wait, about the fryer? Because yes. I know how to talk. Okay. That's number one. Right. Nine o'clock, nine thirty in the morning, I go there. There's CNN there. I mean, it must have been a slow news day that they want to, but it must be a slow news day they want to talk about the fryers. No. Wait a minute. Or this this is a serious thing. Right, right. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. This is the fryers. Not even a cup of coffee they put for these people. Not even a cup of coffee, you miserable cheap bastards. Not even a cup of coffee. You got CNN coming in there, put a donut, a cup of coffee. For crying out loud, you come to my house, at least I give you coffee on the table. I put something. Nothing. It was like a cold, cold. Where was Alan King? But you know where Alan King was when they asked him to do CNN? Alan King went with a cigar in his glass in his hand, and he talked. You know what they talked about? What? Nothing. Nothing. I talk. When I, if they play this 40 minutes that I did, the, the, the whole world's going to know the fry. 40 minutes? 40 oh, minutes. Oh, <laughs> you got to get that. <laughs> I only want 10 minutes. Right. I did 40. Not that the guys were crying from the stuff because you know what? They said you're the only one that told the truth. Well, we can see what you're saying. Right. No, I wish no I coffee, could have that 40 miserable minutes. bastards, no coffee at the fry. I would love to see that tape. Oh, that 40 minutes out. will never see It is going to come out. It's going to come out. Do you feel they'll run the whole thing? I think they're going to bump the Alan King and put my, 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 my time into his time. And you're saying that it's a big deal when the friars can get on CNN. And they don't and put coffee on the table. But forget about that. I came here, you offered me coffee. Then when Alan King gets on TV, TV, he doesn't say anything yeah. that is relevant or interesting. Alan King, Alan King is for Alan King. Right. Alan King doesn't understand that it's over. Alan King is now the maven of the, of the friars. Get up and say, listen to me, I've had my great moments. And Sullivan's dead, Alan. He keeps hearing, you know, here he is, Alan. It's over. It's right. over. <laughs> right. He don't understand that. Right. You know, do a tap dance, do a shuffle. Right. Hug your grandchildren and put some effort into the friars that you're special. Put, you, put yourself special. second to the friars. Now, make the friars special. Number Who's one. Buddy? Right. When Buddy Howe, God love his soul, used to run that place, there was magic in that place. Right. You know what there's now? Just a wand. But there's no magic. Right. You like that? No, no, I hear what you're saying. I, I, I think you're right. I don't know what the fryers is. I don't even know what it is either. You don't have to know. It's not that important. <laughs> it really doesn't make it. Me. And what happened recently? This is unbelievable. The cops came to your house and took away your guns? No, no, no. Not Wait guns. a minute. Not guns. All right. What happened? Not guns. I can understand why they didn't. Wait, no, no, no. Hold on. What are you waiting for? What is it, Armageddon? What is the world ending? I'm glad, is, by the way. Yeah. Why you carry? <laughs> Who would give you a gun? Oh, man. First of all, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. not pretty wrong. How it, how it, I swear to you. What are you doing with firearms? I never wanted it. You never wanted I a gun. Went, I so who gave you a gun? Uh, tell, tell us the whole story of your gun. <laughs> tell you in a couple of seconds. All right, go ahead. I did more benefits for the police. Of the course. Police and the police. And they said to me, you know, you're a son of a, you should be carrying something. I said, I'm not going to carry. I carry my body. Who wants to hit me? You had a, you had a, a, a long permit long to carry a gun? Day. Wait a minute. Right. I went down. I filled out nine forms. This form, your form. This picture, this way, that picture. I don't know. Let me tell you. When I went in the army, they didn't give me a gun. They gave me a spoon. Right. <laughs> I swear to God. So you, so you and because you know so many cops. Yeah. They decided, listen, why didn't you have a gun permit where well, you could carry a concealed Wait weapon? A so I went through the, no favors, I went through the motions, and right. all of a sudden, they turned around and said, you got a pistol. No, nah, so when am I going to get a pistol? Right. So a friend of mine says, Pat, I'll give you my pistol, and they signed that over legally. Everything was legal. Now, right. I didn't put bullets in the gun, I dismantled it, I put it in, 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 in my stocking. Right. Why did you bother getting it, though? You must have had a, you must have had a reason. Uh, they want, you know, sometimes they give you a badge, they give you a badge, they said, try and get it. So I said, but why do you want it? I don't even know. I'm stupid. All right. I told you, I never right. fired a gun in my life. Firecrackers annoy me. Right. All right. So, now, <laughs> they call me, and they, they say it's time for you to you know, renew your appointment. Right. So, they send me more paperwork. Right. What do I do? I, I give them my electric bill that you have to give an electric bill. Or By mistake, I gave them the electric bill. Now, the electric bill has a new address in, in, in the same building, but the address is wrong. Now, this woman officer calls me up. She goes, you're, you're giving us fraud in an address. I said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm playing a, a, a gas electric in there. I don't like your attitude. Do you like my attitude? She said, no. She said, you're giving me a wrong address. What are you trying to... I say, do me a favor, lady. Don't disrespect. I don't give a damn who you are. I'm sorry, you so-and-so. Screw you in your badge. How's that grab you? And screw you in your gun. How's that grab you? Right. Three days later... They yeah, knock on the door. Where's my gun? When right. I shot him the gun, you know what the guy said? Right. If you try to shoot it, you would have blew off your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so they so came and confiscated your gun based on this why conversation. Why did they confiscate the gun? Oh, they have to. carrying no. it. Can because I because here's what happened. Okay. Here's what happened. Tell me what happened. Very obvious. I understand. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, there was a discrepancy in the address. When you have a gun registered in your name, your address has to match your gas and electric bill. And okay. the telephone bill. And, and your telephone. I made a mistake. I put the, the gas and electric What do I know? It's in 115. When I'm in numbers and seven, how the hell do I know? So you made a the mistake on the in, form. The box in the same building, but a different address, but the same building. And, and evidently, then, the woman had a communication problem with Pat. <laughs> no, she didn't believe. Right. She's I don't like. She's, I don't like the attitude. I don't 
don't like you. I said, first of all, I said, you know what you can do with your badge? Mip and ghoul. Let me show up your rear end. I, <laughs> really? I said, I said, don't threaten me. You're saying you're threatening me. And you're a racist. I didn't know she was black or green. She, right. What? I said, you're a racist. Right. Said, I'm going to come and get you. Right. You're not going to get the gun. I said, shove the gun up your rear end. You know what I tell you? Bang, bang, lady. Bang, bang. <laughs> so she turned around. Oh, take three days so you, she, you must have really made her mad if the cops showed up to confiscate oh, your gun. She's not carrying the it. The cops were hilarious. Right. I said, Mr. Cooper, got to pick up your gun. I said, do me a favor. Pick a weapon. Do me a favor. Here's a toothpick. Pick that. That's a weapon. Right. That's a weapon, yeah. You get a toothpick, you put it somebody's gun uh, underneath the chair, you kill someone. Right, right. A weapon. Well, wow. a gun. I want to tape of that conversation. How does he know that? How does he get through life? How does he know that a toothpick under here will kill you? Because he's done it. No, I, 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 was, I talked to guys in jail. And they tell you when you get a toothpick, you want to hurt your guy, you stick that. It's called a lumber infection. Ralph, you're on, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Pat. Yeah. Ralph the Puerto Rican, man. Yeah. How are you, buddy? Go ahead. The greatest comic ever. Thank you. you feel the My brother's name is Pasquale. Yeah. yeah. All right. What do you want to tell Pat? Pat? I said, what do you want to tell Pat? Listen. Is it true Don Rickles stole your act? What about that? A lot of people saying now that Don Rickles stole your act. Don Rickles. Now, Don, Don first was brilliant. I love Don Rickles. You like him. I like Don him, Rickles too. Don Rickles is one of the best. I think the, the, the young youngsters around, uh, Chris Rock is dynamite. Norm MacDonald. I mean, he's funny. I like the guy in Home Box. Let's see, the guy like the uh, Dennis Miller. He's funny. They're all, but you know some A lot of these young, older comics are afraid to say they're great. They're great. It's they are great. Give them, a, give them a break, and then our days are over. I'm hearing the whistle. Brrr, it's finished. Right. Everybody's going, <laughs> you know, everybody's going to millennium, the millennium, right. millennium. It's over. Right. It's 2000. You just, you, you, you've recalled created yourself in a sense. I didn't even mean to do that. Right. It's I just happened. I a push card and sell fish for Christ. Right, right, so right. What did right. Don Rickles do? Did he not say the young comics are great? No, no, I didn't say that. Don uh, Rickles, see, Don Rickles, when Don was the best, Don was the best. He was. But Don respects younger comics today, and I right. love Don for yeah, that. Yeah. And Don, to me, is still one of the funniest off the top, off the cuff. I agree. And, 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 and you can tell him, he's, he, he's a giant in my eyes, he'll always be a giant. So he didn't right. steal anything from you? Well, no. Don Rickles can't also have to steal from me. What does he need me for? Right. All right, well, this was this, was this guy on the phone. Tom, what is it? Hi, Howard. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that Pat has the audacity to come in after he uh, sits there on a board. And what board? I don't belong on a board. No, you were on a board. I was never on a board. Off the, air. the board of what? What board? I don't know. Aren't you retarded? Yes, I am retarded, but don't put me on a board. <laughs> <laughs> what board are you talking about? What are you talking about? He's on the retarded board. Oh, oh this we is are. ridiculous. Boom, boom. Yeah. What? Where do you find these people? <laughs> they find Years ago, you had quality. Now yeah. it's getting down to, down to nothing here. I don't, I don't even know what the guy's talking about. Well, then try to uh, 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 deep nine them. Uh, Ray, go ahead. Uh, yeah. This question for Pat. Yeah. Yes? Well, let's look at about 1986, Pat. 85, yeah. you left the Narragansett Inn. I paid for a whole table. You're right, I did. What That's is this right. about, Pat? Uh, wait, wait a minute. The man so, told the truth. So theoretically, you owe me close to 2800 bucks. Okay. I, well, what's your address? <laughs> Get me off the phone and you can send it. I'll even pick it what up. What is he talking about, Pat? I don't even understand what? this. Excuse me a minute. Always remember one thing. There's a reason when I do something. Yeah. At that particular place, they were starting to come in with cameras. What place? What I are mean, we talking about? Camera, 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 the Narragansett Inn. Where is it? On Long Island. 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 You stayed there? No, no. I was going to do a show there. Go ahead. They came in with cameras, and they wanted to film my act. As you don't film my act for $3. Right. I could go on home box for thousands. Right. They says, well, then that's the, that's the story. That's the story. Goodbye. And I went home. Oh, that's enough. I don't agree. I don't disagree with that. Why, sir? He doesn't owe you anything. Oh, give me a break. Guess, this is his life's work. No, they don't understand. See, see, no, no. See, we have no lives. We, 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 we can be abused and we can be filmed anytime you want to. They can take pictures of your children. They can, they, but don't do it to them. You do it to them, they cry poverty. Right. So this gentleman over here didn't understand the truth. And I'm not angry. He was twenty eight hundred dollars. Hey, do, do you feel favor. better now, sir? That you know Pat, the explanation? Absolutely, Pat. Thank okay. you very much. I love you, buddy. All right, you well, set you straight. That's absolutely. all. And that's the truth. Now, Howard, I don't right. walk out of nowhere. I told you last night. Hey, I, let me ask you something. What do you think of this guy, Mark Harris? I mean, he's in the green room. Can I tell you something? I like this guy. You like him? Can I? Tell but he's delusional. No, he, no. I gotta tell you why he's, he's delusional. Why do you think he's no. delusional? I'll tell you why he's delusional. Can I tell you something? I'll tell you a story. Why I like him? Right. He's fun. He's, 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 I, I like to be with him. He's a Would you like to meet him? I met him. He was in a dream. We, we talked on the phone a couple of times. Really? What and, do you mean you talked on the phone? Ray, what Dr. do you mean Ray. you talked on the phone? Oh no. Does that bother you? Yeah. No. What, how do you, what do you mean you talked call on the me, phone? Call me. Call me when it's you know he wanted to do some couple of things. Want to meet me in New York? He's a fine gentleman. He invites me to party. 
parties if I want to go. Do you ever go? No, I'm not a party. I'm like you. I'm, I'm, I don't go nowhere. You think he's in love with you? You know, he's a bisexual. Oh, he's oh. Something. Yeah. That's something. I don't care his, his sexual gender. Of course I not. I like him. I you really do. like him. You know why? He's got a certain quality that he's a likable guy. Right. I, can I bet? Don't cross him. Uh, really? Why is that? Because, what would he do? Because he's got Who that thing on the side of the... What do you think of the fact that he married an old woman? He didn't marry an old woman. We married someone that he probably loved, he cared about. I said, who cares who we married? I, right. I marry a goddamn alligator. Well, who cares? Right. <laughs> would you... Let, well, well, let me understand. Here's, here's the problem. Yeah, let's, there's no, no problem. Mark, thing Mark thing wants to be... Understand. Yeah, Mark wants to be in show business. <laughs> all right? Pat, listen to me. Yeah. Pat's looking at his watch. What are we what, what, Are we holding you up? You have no, somewhere no, no. to go? You know why? Why? I learned from the last couple of times. Before you turn around and say, Pat, it's been a pleasure, I'll get out the door. <laughs> no, I'm not asking you to leave. Because I, I know you. You're not going to deep nine me tonight. By the way, let me give you a plug before I forget so you don't get mad. Uh, you'll be on the Fox News channel on Saturday at 4 Classic p.m. movie tone news. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's one of the nicest things that happened. That's Often I said classic. It's this Saturday? This Saturday, Saturday we got every week. And you have and manja. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Right. Okay? And, and, and you're in the process of writing a book, and All you right. also have manja, manja. Bodyguard's Bodyguard, which is going to be one of the best Italian books ever made because it's a true story about a guy who is really... Protected. All right, the so-called tough guys. Okay, good. I'll give you one fast story. Uh, Jelly really? Rizzo. Wait. Jelly Rizzo was Frank Sinatra's bodyguard. Right. This guy was Frank. Was Jelly Were you at Frank's uh, funeral? I don't go to funerals. Were you invited? I don't go to nobody's funeral. Were you invited? No, I wasn't invited. I wouldn't go for Why were you not invited? I don't have to go. I don't go to funerals. He didn't like Frank Sinatra. No, I did, but I didn't. I don't go to funerals. You didn't like Frank Sinatra? I don't go to my mother and father's funeral. Why do you say he doesn't like Frank Sinatra? I remember him saying something about, you know. No, no, no. No misinterpreting. What I said was the truth. What? Well, my, 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 my situation with him, they said, well, I told him. I didn't, yeah, go I didn't ahead. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Okay. What happened with you and Frank? Nothing. We just turned around. You know, when you work with a man like Frank Sinatra, you have to be his comic. Right. I ain't nobody's comic. He didn't pay me. Why should I be his comic? Right. He ain't my singer. Right. So he told me one night, he says, take out a story in your act. I said, do I tell you what songs to sing? Right. That was the end of my career with him. Right. Okay? Right. And another time. What story did he want taken out? He was something about the saints upside down. I used to do in the act. Okay, right. now. Right. Then I mean. Because it was about, religious. Yeah. No, it wasn't me. It was funny. Give me a fake. But they wanted to test me, see if I could crumble. I don't crumble. Right. See, Frank likes to turn around and put three puffs in your pocket and squash them. Right. He likes to turn around and put firecrackers in your shoes. You can't do that. He wants to see if I he can like control that. you. Nobody controls me. I don't right. control me. You didn't even buckle to the Frank Sinatra. Buckle who? Were you afraid? I'll because one, but it was always rumored he had mafia connections. Were you Everybody, afraid that he would have you? Connections. Did he, was, were you, were you afraid he would rub you out? Nobody rubs me out. No one. <laughs> no one. That's right. You have a gun. Oh, you did. Tell you what. You're right. I'm doing a benefit. Frank Sinatra says I'm going to do four. Songs. I said, okay. He said, when I finish the fourth song, you come out. He says, and introduce Peggy Lee. I said, fine. He comes off. As he's coming off in the fourth song, I run out. I told you three songs. You're never going to work with me no more. Well, he laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. He had the graces of humor. Right. Two years later, I meet him on the street. He goes, Pat, can I do the fourth song? Yeah, well, That's let me tell you something. So Meanwhile, I, I, if he had a great sense of humor, he wouldn't have asked you to cut out his joke. What about... You never worked with him again. What about... I don't care. Nobody <laughs> controls me. Great sense of humor. Right. No one controls you, right? That's right. Right. I understand that. <laughs> Gary, you're on the air. Okay. Hi, Howard. It's, uh, my name is Gary Scritt. Um, I just wanted to know I was a limousine driver in Atlantic City, and I drove uh, Mr. Cooper's uh, wife and daughter home from Caesars back in, I believe, it was 84, 85. To make the story short, I get to Manhattan. I drive down where he lives. I get out of the limousine to uh, get the bag, and a guy comes out of nowhere and pushes me out of the way and reaches into the, the trunk, and he starts grabbing the bag, and it was Pat Cooper. Right. Now, he, he doesn't let me carry any of the bags. He walks with me and his wife and daughter to the elevator. He turns around. He says, thank you very much for bringing my wife and, and daughter to me safely. And he hands me a $50 bill as a tip. Oh. Wow. As far as I'm concerned, there's nobody like that guy. I mean, everybody's got a lot of things to say about him. But as a real human being, the guy is right down to earth. And oh, you're a generous very, man, Pat. Last night, last night, last night the, kids, the, the, the the guy took us into Caesars. Would you pay hundred dollars? You gave him hundred bucks. Absolutely. You're a generous man. And I gave the other guy going sixty dollars. What the hell's wrong? I gave him hundred sixty dollars. Right. Because you know why? You know why? You're making a great living. I was so afraid that was going to be a horror Did story. Yeah. Didn't it sound like it was going to go? And then Pat would and Pat would have taken me and choked me. No, wouldn't have. I mean, if it's the truth, how would I can handle it? No, you know, in this bad story, you get crazy. I hear it. You get nuts. You, you start screaming. I'm setting you up. No, you can never. Stop I, I mean, it's unbelievable. What are you talking about? Where are your memory going? Pat's Pat's going senile. I think nobody knew it. Everyone's so shocked when something nice happens. So Pat, yes, sir. Help me out with this, Mark Harris for a minute because he did come in and as long as you're here I think it would be interesting. Am I on or off? You're off you're now. Off. We've had it with you. Go spend your $50. <laughs> so he, he, this guy 
you know, he really isn't in show business, but he wants to be in show right. business. All right, you and you meet a lot of people like this who feel they should be in show business, but they never really have any talent. And you're a big guy on talent. Right. You Mark, think people, talented people should be in this business. Well, I don't judge him. I don't know. I've never seen him do anything. I mean, I, I just like him as a person. This is, I want you to help me with this okay. guy. All right. You, 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 here's Mark Harris. Come in. Pat, oh, Pat'll help me. Oh, what is he wearing oh, today? Well, I was yawning. I heard breaking news. Don't sit too close to Pat. Oh. Oh, 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 but Phil, oh, oh, but Phil, we will kick your ass and Phil. Here is Mark singing. You're on me, a bug. Jeff and Phil, we go to jail. We get your butt. It's a funny song he says. They hit a hoe. You're on me, you're on me with God. All right, so he wants to be a singer. Right, what's the number so much? He can be anything he wants. He can be a juggler. All right, here's, here's my problem. Is it open for you? Uh, Mark, has, open for me Mark has an idea. Because I've had some people open for me can't do nothing. At least the guy that walks out there, he's got something to say. He's got a good sense of humor. Right, Mark <laughs> has... I'm not soliciting you, Mark. No, no, I think no, no, you know no. me better. Mark had... Mark... First of all, Mark, I don't even know how you got Pat Cooper's phone number. I don't know how you call him. I gave it him. You did? Yeah, that's I, I, I gave him. Oh. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, we don't have his phone, phone number. number. I don't even have his yes, phone number. Do, do, do I have your phone number? Odd. No, you don't. I wouldn't give it to you. I wouldn't ask you for it. Right. I, I got what do I want to bother you with my number well, for? You may turn around one day and want your life picked up. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Good morning, Robin. Good morning. You look marvelous. Oh, Mark, what, what, uh, Mark. Yep, yep, yep. Mark, Mark's a nice guy. I like Mark, too. You sure? Don't get me wrong. But I'm always trying to bring him down to earth. Mark has this idea. He wants a TV show. Well, you has got a show, cooking show. Thing. Mark has been selling a cooking show for how long? Yeah. No, I gave that up. You, you gave that up. Mark always has a TV show. Let me explain this. So he comes to me. He says, I got a show. You know, they'll go on after your show or before your show on Saturday nights. And uh, I said, yeah, what's the show? He, said, he wants to be like Ted Mack, Ted Mack's amateur. People will come on and perform, and then he will critique them. It's like the gun show. Yeah. So I said, go out and shoot a pilot or something. Comes back, I, I would play it for you. I can't even shoot. I can't even play for you. The, the audio is so bad, you can't even understand what anyone's saying. Now, so he really did go shoot. So I did Mark a favor. I gave it to Vinny Favalli, who's in charge of late night programming at CBS. I said, why not? And Mark's a friend of the show. I'll help him out. So Vinny, Mark calls him every day. Vinny doesn't know what to say to him. Because with Vinny, Vinny doesn't know what to say to Mark. Because really, a nice guy. It, no Great one's looking guy. for the Ted Mack Amateur Hour. It, it, it already was on the air, and really, the, the gong show was on the air. And, and then they, there was Star Search. Star you know, Search Star was on Search. the air. It, it really is not an original idea. No, just right. an updated, personality-driven show. Right. And there's a lot of singers and wannabes out there. So Vinny said to me, what am I going to do with this guy? He calls me every day. Actually, it was Vinny who started the thing by saying he wanted a lead-out show. Well, he does want a lead-out okay. show, but, but so this I is not it. This little dim oh, you decided that... I haven't decided. Vinny decided. Oh, oh. Vinny uh, didn't say that. Are people looking for another amateur hour, Pat? Uh, they, be honest with them, please. You want the truth? Yeah. We're going to have 150 channels. We need to. You're going to have to fill those that, that space up. You, you mean product. there's enough room for Mark? Uh, there's always enough room. <laughs> You're saying there's 150. Hey, if Rosie O'Donnell could get good ratings, I oh, could get ratings. Oh. You just hit a knife. <laughs> oh, no, I, got a oh, I think you're better than Rosie O'Donnell. I'll give you that. I certainly do. You're more real. Here's Vinny. Vinny, tell Mark already. <laughs> big fan, Mark. I'm a big fan. Oh, I right. know. Vinny's in charge. Pat, you know Vinny. Vinny, how are you? Hey, Pat, how are you? We had fun the last time we were together. What? Cindy Adams party. Oh, uh, wasn't that great? That was terrific. Were you at that Cindy Adams party? Yeah, I mean, I, that's it. I went to Cindy's party, and hello, goodbye, and I left. I'll, I'll tell you something. I do. I'll tell you something, Mark. You bring up Rosie O'Donnell. You're more feminine than Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> I should hope. I'm a lot prettier. Did you see the size of You're her? You're gorgeous. Thank you. Yes, you are. Absolutely. She's anti-fur. She wears leather. Right. She eats a, a lot contest. of beef. Did you see those hips? She's anti-gun. She supports Kmart. Yeah. She's anti-gun. Right. She's anti-pasta. But she doesn't know what she's talking about. So, Vinny, lay it to Mark once and for all so he understands. Well, well, Howard, you said that we're clear. Did you see the tape that I sent? Yeah, I saw the tape. Okay. Yeah, it's very hard to figure out what's going on in that tape. All right, that's all. Well, I think right. you well, spiked it up with your... Well, he needs a producer is what he's saying. Right. you got to produce. He needs a producer. Mar Mark, he, yeah. he, he, I mean, what I really, you know, what, what I talked about with Howard about the tape is the thing that you didn't do was you didn't adapt yourself to Howard's audience. I know you you, you think that Howard's audience would tolerate this kind of show. Nick in with your what shocking kind of show guess. Is yeah. <laughs> what kind of show is it? Alan? It's an amateur. It's 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 um. Well, I mean, what Max. is he Ted doing? Max. I mean, uh, he, he has various people on, and then like he has a singer on. He starts teaching the singer how to sing. Oh, oh no! Bye, 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 bye. Bye. Hey, we're laughing, and it might be funny. Yeah, it might it be a Vinny, Vinny, it's a lot funnier the way I'm telling you. Believe me, Pat. Why didn't you put him under your production company? I don't have a yeah, I have a production company. Yeah, Gary, you're not a good boy. here, Mark. I want I want to say I think you're a great guy, but if you're trying to talk to an audience. Yeah. Today's day and age. It's 1999. We're talking about the millennium. Right. Why would you tell a five-year-old girl she could be the next Ethel Merman? 
Anybody knows? The whole world doesn't know who Ethel Merman is. Know Ethel Merman. Maybe, seriously, you realize Ethel Merman is not a big name anymore. No, it's over. No. It's over for Ethel Merman. Gee, Talk about curtain. Hey, hey, Mark. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. Mark. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for you. On your show, would you do the things that Howard does to keep that audience? Would you shave a woman's, you know, private parts? Would you uh, throw the woman? do anything. Woman? Definitely not. He'd get a woman no, driving no, no. I said no. <laughs> what I, he, would take his, uh, he would cut his penis off on a TV show. <laughs> no, what I did do, uh, I thought uh, by connecting the radio, you could get all, you know, the talent that you could recruit and go to Atlantic City Hotel, who I'm speaking to. And, uh, well, Mark's got a lot of connections, Howard. Speak, he does. Speak, and speak what? And I even spoke to Mike Wallace about this. Recently. Mike Wallace? Yeah, Mike Wallace. 60 yeah. minutes. 60 minutes. What did you say to him? <laughs> I said, I'm working on the possibility Mark of returning know anyone at, at, uh, Ted Mack, and he thought it was a wonderful idea. Where did he you said see he Mike Wallace? It. I said, well, I'm only talking to Howard Stern about it. And what did he, then he threw up? No. <laughs> very Mark nice was man. mugging Where did he very, see Very, very nice man. Can you keep my name out of those yeah. conversations? Where did you see Mike Wallace? I was at a party for David Wolfer. Oh, I'm not a party. Oh, oh please. Pat, would night. you set him straight, right. obviously? Right. He, he's a little delusional, right? No, I was. Sexual. What do you mean? How can you set him straight? <laughs> 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 I guess Pat likes going to these parties because he doesn't want to insult Mark. I have a lot of parties. I have a hello for everybody here from except Marklin. I swear to God. I was at this I mean, really guy, this guy, this time. guy, he, hey, hey. You were about to get married, weren't you? Again. Yeah, I slept yeah. with Jilda's last night. You did? Yes. You slept Jilda's. with her. The therapist yeah. came over and she did a little... How old is Jilda? Tell Pat. March will be 80. What's the one that's that? Come on. But wait, Pat, why do you, Pat, what do you think of a guy Pat. who keeps going out with 80, 90-year-old oh, women lovely gal. And, and who are wealthy, who are wealthy? It's okay. Come on. Come on, Pat. Don't sacrifice. What happened to you? I just didn't... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know there's something wrong with a guy marrying an 80-year-old. I don't think there's anything wrong with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark is shooting Jackie with a water gun. Do <laughs> you think Rosie O'Donnell would approve of the heft uh, So what do you, what do you, uh, all right, I don't know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah. I, I'm lost. I'm no, lost you're not, amazing. and you're not even blonde. What? What's bothering you? No, I mean, <laughs> you're this 80-year-old woman. I mean, didn't she dump you? Dump? Yeah. Nobody dumps me. Okay. Okay. Dumps. Oh, Mark. My kind of guy. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Tell Howard about your new idea based on the Will and Grace sitcom where Martha I was at goes. Yeah, I was. Uh, this uh, is a uh, good uh, idea, Howard. Uh, Vinny, yeah, Vinny, Vinny, does Mark, Vinny, does Mark call you every day with new programming ideas? Mark calls me 10 times. You gotta say something. I hooked Mark up with Vinny as a joke. You, gave him you didn't do it. I said, to, I said, Vinny, I just I gave Mark Harris your phone number. Quite frankly, I was there, Mark. Howard was just trying to get you off his back. Right, so I said, I'm going to a good position. So now Mark actually. Has, Mark's not my girlfriend. Mark yes, actually has that. the phone number of a real television executive. Yeah, guy who runs shows. And so Mark is going nuts. He's thinking, what can I pitch? So what did he pitch you now? Okay, um, Mark was at the uh, rap party for Will and Grace, you know, the uh, sitcom at NBC. How, does he, how do you get into a, a party like that? Even Pat Cooper. I was at a great it. party last night, and Freddie Roman says hello to you and everybody except Jack Mark, and Mark. stay to the topic. Talk about Will and Grace. Okay, Will and Grace. Is that the shooting of the Freddie party? Roman was there? Yeah. Really? No, no, not at the show, not at Will and Grace. No, not at Will and Grace. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah, he, Go ahead. you're getting, you're jumping. Party, Mark, like stay Mark. on track, Mark. Right, 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 right. Go ahead. Okay. So you, so what is the so idea? I, uh, I registered a treatment and uh, <laughs> registered. registered. He read the whole thing to me yesterday. Good. Acted out all the parts all over the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. is it not good or what? It was, it was actually. Totally I would like to hear the pitch. It's based on my life. What is, what is the pitch? Maybe Pat Copper will be on it. You know what? There's something here, Pat. You should hear this. Okay. Yeah. It's called Oh Daddy. You know, I really do have many children, and at 50 years old in this Bel Air mansion that I built, it's a Sunday, and I'm sitting home as all these girls, unmarried, come home, one with a black baby, one with a Mexican baby, the other one pregnant, who's uh, going to have a Japanese baby, and my 12-year-old in real life is the stepsister to these uh, children. And with my butler answering the door, <laughs> I go upstairs to speak to my late wife who I could see in here, which is Martha Ray in the same right, period so of Cosmo Topper. Right. So I Topper, right. you are married to Martha Ray. And I'm the only one that could see a hero. And then Martha Ray comes back. She's wow. talking to you about all these problems. I got to admit, oh, that is some story. Yeah. Hey, Mark, Mark, how old is Martha when she comes back? Is she old Martha or, or young? Uh, well, uh, visually, I would say visually. in her 60s. In her 60s. 60s. Right. Yeah. 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 Wow. 
Wow. Well, come back as a virgin. Uh, what would you would you like to be in this show? No. No. That's for me. Right. It's right not away. for me. Right. I turn down things I don't belong to. Me. I don't want to be a part of it. Not that I dislike this man's power. I, I, it's not for me. He's got people out there that belong in that situation. I had a thought for Mark. Seriously, yeah. what about Gay Texas Ranger? That's a good one. Like I, the I Chuck Norris show. I want to be in that one. Yeah, except Mark. I want to play. I want to play. <laughs> I want to play the Tonto. Yeah, he, he'll be Tonto. Yeah. And plenty of leather. Wait a minute, Mark just scares all the criminals. He right. Shows up and they run. So what about what about that, Vinny? He calls you know every day with different ideas. He calls me. Yeah, he's got a lot of energy. I mean, he really does. All right. Like, to be honest, uh -huh. is, is, is does he do any of his ideas seem to be of interest to CBS Television? Well, this, I mean, you know, the late night show would never work because he's right. got to speak to your audience. Right. You know. All um, right. That's legitimate. Um, as far as he the, says, he's entertainment for the millennium. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. One Which millennium? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> figure that out. Hey, go ahead, Vinny. I'm looking. He's trying. He is trying. trying. Right. Oh, my live <laughs> act is very good. People Magazine comes out on the stands, two pages of story on me, and they, People Magazine. No. Yeah, I'm Where? 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 No. What do you mean, no? It's impossible. No, they are, Howard. It's, yeah, it's, they're looking sure. back at 25 years, and they're doing a retro on no. his marriage to Martha Ray. I see. No, no. So not no, about they're not doing about no, the wait, marriage to Martha. Straight You're straight wrong. You know. Say Mark's it comes out on the stand June 4th. And what is it about, Mark? It's about me and my life. And, oh, uh, it is? Wow. Yeah. wow. Okay. My act. I'm, uh, Jeez, I, need, I didn't maybe say maybe we need it for my life. Right. I have Where a live act called being Red performed? Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Oh, my. Going back, I think they mentioned that, June 7th. Pat, have you ever seen his act? No, I you gotta check that. I'll send you some of that. I'll send him a tape. Yeah, he's, because he's very busy. All right, listen. Yes, this is exciting. <laughs> We're gonna leave. What is he yeah. up to now? Oh, Mark, I'm go. Me? Me? Well, my okay, therapist there is here. She can jill me yesterday. And I, well, wait, Mark is talking. What is it, Mark? My therapist is outside. She's she, gorgeous. She's she gorgeous. Is. You want to bring her in? And she's gorgeous. And I have a and clairvoyant. He's got a good bodyguard. Oh, and my bodyguard is there. And I, you know, the lower the lower you are on the totem pole, the more you montage you have. Pat Cooper comes. You don't have anybody with you. Got to my bodyguard. Seriously, who is with you? A bodyguard? Why do you need a bodyguard? That's what I asked. Look really? It. Seriously? Why Some do you need my clothes? My clothes. Look how I'm dressed. I mean, how people clothes? are anti-American. I'm very patriotic. Ah, no, really, what, what, what is this with the bodyguard? Seriously. The therapist. And why is your therapist with you? She's gorgeous. Well, she did analyze yeah. Jilda yesterday, not financially. Right. And then uh, she analyzed me and the situation, and it was okay. Are you still thinking of marrying this 80-year-old woman? No. It's no off. marriage. No marriage. No. You're just dating. It's going to be together. Can Does I she give you money? No. Be honest. Has she ever given me money? I'm just honest. <laughs> Has she ever given me money? Right. No. She's picked up a check. Of uh, what? Of a, a car? A restaurant. That's oh it. no, 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 no cars. All right. Howard therapist and but I just got. I acts. inherited a lot of land. From, from who? From who? Really? It's true. Uh, I don't know how you do it. I don't he inherits know. everything. Why hasn't he inherit. run out of money yet, Howard? The, the conservatorship never found this land that Martha owned in oh, it's Martha's in the land. Bahamas. No, it's uh, now okay. mine. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> poor daughter. <laughs> poor daughter. Poor daughter who never gets no money. Poor. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Tell Howard about biography. Oh, I just finished the A and E biography of Martha Ray. You did. And a matter of fact, you're talking. about Are my you all over it? Of course. Of course. It's just a husband. <laughs> and close up shots. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and Norman Lear, I called him and I also gave him the sitcom that I wrote. Right. He knows and everybody. I know Joe Donapoli. That's where my mind I don't know anybody is. either. Let me take a, a few phone calls. All right. Mickey, go ahead. Mickey, yeah, I just go. I wanted to say that if Mark Harris gets his own TV show, I'm throwing out my TVs and throwing my sphincter up. <laughs> oh, you, you really will, should. You will throw out all of your television I really yeah, think I you should. Of them too. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so this is wild, Pat. As you can see, Mark is someone who's trying to establish himself in the entitled. Entitled. We're all entitled to do something. I mean, right. give him a if break. everybody else could do vulgarity, surely I could do just clean, good humor. I would like to see him in a talk show, you know, and sit down and talk. Well, they canceled I mean, Mandel. That's I mean, a, a good time show, slot. I think so. They canceled Howie Mandel, and you would like that time slot. Oh, that's great, yeah. by the way. Why they cancel him, I'll never know. That what would be a great... Howie, Howie, if you're listening, you're dynamite. And by the way, Martin Short's getting one. He's going to be dynamite also. And if <laughs> dynamite you know, right into the ratings. Yeah, I mean, Martin, if dynamite. you're listening, Martin Short, <laughs> I read in the paper yesterday, Bernie Brillstein was my ex-manager. Right. I said, you're looking for talent. My name is Pat Cooper. You don't have to look so far. <laughs> right. You are what available. Yeah. What are they looking for? I'm right in front of you. I'm like a tree right in front of you. you would be a great ensemble player. I would be great with Martin Short, Harry Short, and Nicky Long. Right. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> I How think you're terrific. They go, they're looking for Star Search. I'm right in front of you, blind bastards. What's the matter with you? <laughs> yeah. Give me a break. Pat, you're absolutely right. 
I want to thank you for being here. I love I love having you on here. You know that. Please come again. Don't tell me to walk off the street anytime. I want to come on. Anytime you want, walk off the street. I don't care. But I might have to bump you. You know why? I would never do it. You know I can. I would never do such a thing. But I thank you for Well, I love having you here. I think you're a big talent. I think so. I mean, never mind Martin Short. I put you on. I like Martin Short. I like, you know, and I like my buddy here. He's a nice You like Mark Harris. And I, Rob, and I love you. I love you, Solon. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, bud. He's walking out. walking out where you can dismiss him. He doesn't like like your dismissal. I know I'm in trouble. You're never supposed to. Pat Cooper will be on the Fox oh News. <laughs> Pat Cooper will be on the news channel on uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. He has and he has a pilot show called Manja Manja, and he's in the process of writing a book called The Bodyguard Bodyguard. And you can see him uh, doing his stand-up act all over the country. He's a very, very talented man. Pat Cooper. Bye, Pat. All right. Bye, Pat. All right. I think he's yes. running from Mark, actually. I don't know. He's leaving. Yeah, I think he's running out of here because Mark's here. <laughs> He's great. There's a clairvoyant outside who uh, right. was a clairvoyant for Nicole Simpson. He read my stones. <laughs> I, figured, I figured you just have to meet him. He was Joe Franklin Nicole Simpson's me. clairvoyant. I know. He couldn't be very good. He has yeah. documentation. You know what I'll do? Yeah, Let me take a break. You sit here. Uh, uh, yeah. And I want to meet the, your, your therapist. Your therapist. And I want to meet your clairvoyant. Oh, but meet and the bodyguard, bodyguard first. It's built like a refrigerator. Yeah, I want to meet everyone. Okay. Because you're, you're fascinated. Because it's a new group every time he comes in, too. Yeah. We're going to take a break. We'll be back what right after this. What do you do this. with these people? Who are these? Uh -huh. Jimmy, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Howie. Hi, how are you? How you doing? Best of luck to you. I hope everything works out. Thank for you. you, Jimmy. Uh, well, I was in uh, Little Italy Deli. A uh, while ago, over a month ago, I think it you was. Know, Little that Italy is disappearing. Where yeah. is Little Italy anymore? Well, it's like down to one block. It's little so Italy, very little now. Little Italy used to be the best. Uh, used to go down there and have a good time, but I see it's disappeared. A lot of the Chinese. The Chinatown is overtaken. The Chinese yeah. are growing like it's China. Yeah, the groups are taking over everything. What is it that? Uh, listen, well, I don't know about that, but the Chinese. Uh, what is it that? The, yeah, right. <laughs> what is it that the Chinese? I mean, they populate. They like rabbits. They like rabbits. <laughs> well, I think Pat Cooper was. In there and he was bad mouthing you. Oh please! Well, listen. I think know. it was. He has like reddish brown hair, big right. glasses. Yeah. He looks different uh, in person. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And he was just saying like, well, uh, you know, what goes up must go down. He was telling the deli guy, uh, you know, uh, he's going to get his eventually. Look what's happening. You know, everything uh, you boy. say, you know, uh, it's coming back to you now. Well, uh, well, whatever. Listen, you know, I, I, but he was really, you know, ranting and raving. I don't know if that's uh, listen, whatever. Whatever. What I am think I it, uh, maybe it wasn't him. I don't want to get him in yeah. trouble. I've done nothing. Him. I've done nothing but good stuff for Pat Cooper. Well, if he's got a problem, you can't do enough for some people. Yeah. But uh, if he was bad mouthing me, uh, you know, as he often says, your listeners are saying this about me, and I never bad mouth you. But who knows? What can I tell you? Well, who cares anymore? You know what I mean? Well, I thought he was on your side. Well, I never. I don't seem to find too many people on my side. Well, I am. You're the best. Thanks. There's nobody like you. Thank you. All right, Howard. Nice talking to you. Uh huh. Pat Cooper's on the air. Hey, Pat. Yeah. What do you Pat say, buddy? Cooper? Wow. Who's this? Howard. Howard, let me ask you a question. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Pat. Many more to you. Yes. I got, a, I got a, a guy called me up and played me a tape. Yes. That somebody called you a couple of weeks ago that I bad you. And I'm saying, wait a minute. I didn't entertain it. No, no, I didn't say you did. Okay. But I'm only angry at your lady friend over there. Oh. Who's that? Robin. <laughs> she said... <laughs> you talking about Angie? This is said, the greatest. She said there's some people you can't do enough for. I you. And I got news for you. Hey, hey, Robin, when's the last time you picked up a check? <laughs> when's the last time you ever discovered anybody or gave anybody anything to make a remark like that? Are you nuts? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I did. Some people you can't do enough for. What? No. Let me ask you something. Sometimes when how it's done, is how it's done, as in me, how it's done a lot of nice things, and I think I've contributed to that program with my heart. <laughs> Good, better, and different. But when you turn around and throw an ad lib like that, I'm saying, wait a minute. You think I got nothing but time to bad my people? I'm a man for crying out loud. I make mistakes like everybody else, but it's I don't so want to be put Pat, in that situation. Pat, Pat, yeah, Pat, 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 Pat. For a, sa a second, <laughs> if it were true, might it not seem that way? And I was only going by what the guy said. Why did you call and me, Robin? If that and, were the case, why did you call me? And maybe it? you can't do enough for some people. Excuse me, darling. Why don't when something why like that? Why not say Robin is mistaken? Let me call her up and tell her she is mistaken. Well, sweetheart, you are mistaken. All right, there I we just, go. But honey, I'm I just, sorry, I, I, I was just, mistaken. Somebody just played the tape for me, and I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm saying, what did I ever do? To, I don't understand how stupid. You know, <laughs> Howard. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Right. What's this, in the air today? Is this, oh, is, 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 is this bad mouthing you? Where? 
have you been? How come you haven't been on the show lately? Well, what are you busy with? I'm ready to go. Oh, you are? I'm ready to go and bite your face. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. Yes. When I, someone asked me what I thought about your personal, you know, uh, uh, with your wife. You know what I said? It's none of my business. Is that bad mountain you? No. Oh, well, that's, that's what... Your personal life? That's exactly what you should say. But I said it's none of my business. I don't give a goddamn one way or the other. <laughs> right. I mean, you never can stop it. It's not In other words, you probably, you probably feel uh, some warmth toward me and feel bad that I have to go through I this. Would, I, would, I would turn around and bend over backwards that these things don't happen. Right. And they rob it. Yes. Don't ever ice skate on water because it don't work. <laughs> Whatever that means. You, you know what it means. <laughs> uh, well, you have to come in here soon to straighten this out. Uh, well, I'll come in any time. All right. I'm here for another week. All right, thank you, Pat. You'll be well and take care. Happy, Bye, New, Robin. Year. Oh, Happy, Happy New Year. Oh, good job. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Jeez. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Let's go on. I didn't say anything. <laughs> she don't want to get started. I say lots. I say plenty. <laughs> that makes me so f mad. Ooh, Reuben Carter is the subject of a new film. It's called The Hurricane. What did he think of the film the first time he saw it? I sat there with a, tried to sit there with a very um, objective view towards yeah, yeah, the consistency yeah. of the picture. He's definitely got some prison lingo. Toward the consistency. the consistency. And whether people, everybody in the picture were doing their proper jobs. That everybody in the picture was doing their proper jobs. I gotta remember that. <laughs> that's, that's what I, I looked for. I was looking for and the sure enough, I was looking for the consistency. That's that prison thing, right? You try to use big words to intimidate. I was looking for the consistency. You hear a brother talking like that, you know he's he's been in prison. He's been behind bars. Yeah, it's a lot of time to sort of like pick up a few big words. Oh dear. If, um, I saw that, that the crew did a magnificent job. The whole crew. Mm. Yes, Baba Booey? Baba Booey. Um, you know, I, mm -hmm. you said something on the air last week. Baba I was Bowie. reading a review of the movie in Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. said, same thing you said. It's a great movie, but there's not a grain of truth in it. Yeah, right. Baba Booey. They said there's like a hundred facts Bowie. in there that are just made up for the movie. <laughs> Baba Booey. <laughs> uh, I don't know that there's no truth to his... That, wrongful incarceration. That's the one thing in the movie that's true. But they made yeah. up a character who's a white cop who started uh, started uh, right. following him around since he was eight years old, who didn't exist, calling right. him the N word, right. and you know set him up for the crime, just like which isn't true. Right. And the real story is so cool. What are you gonna make all that junk up? Yeah, for? I mean, you know, I isn't know. that I fueling the fire? To, uh, yeah. Write the movie. All right. Are we, uh, what, what, anything left? <laughs> that's what's up. What is it, Kim? I'll let you have the last word. What is your problem with Hurricane? Hurricane? Uh, yes. Did no you problem. See the movie? No, 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 not at all. What but they say that they made up a lot of the facts. Like, you know, the white. No, they didn't. The white guy chasing him since he's eight years old. The cop framing him. That was true. No, they, they, they're saying there was no. There was no. See, all of you are arguing it about stuff true. you don't I'm know I'm telling about. you, it yeah. is true. Did you read the book? Don't mean the book is true. Did you see his interview? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, and mm -hmm. what happened? You know what happened. What? I saw it, then I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got to go. Goodbye, Kim. <laughs> this is so silly. <laughs> I really don't know anything about Hurricane Carter, I'll be honest with you. I really could care less. You know what I mean? Gary couldn't make a mistake, could he? No, oh, please. Mm. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, Wolf. Uh, I was sure at the time I said it. I think uh, the only thing is true is his name was Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> May I defend myself quickly? Please. So I'm reading from this article out of Sports Illustrated, and it's talking about some of the things that are factually incorrect. You know, they say you were a beaver in a past life. That's correct. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You know, so it says uh, it says that Carter was stalked since childhood by a racist cop, robbed of a decision in a middleweight title fight, framed for a triple homicide by, by the racist cop and wrongly convicted by two all-white juries. You're saying none of that happened in well, well, they're saying that the, the, the facts are um, the depraved stalker cop is a fabrication. The boxing match, by contemporary accounts, people who were there and saw it, was won fairly by the middleweight, and two blacks sat on the second jury that convicted Carter. The film also conveniently fails to mention that at the time of the triple homicide, Carter had already served four years in prison for three different muggings. Right. So does that mean that there's a lot of... I didn't say anything. Didn't you see the did you see the report? And then and then the, it goes on to turns to me like I started this argument. Yeah, right. Well no, because I heard you make the last comment. I'm carrying on with the show. Yeah, you, you know what? You never made a mistake in any of your facts. Can I say something, baby? Pat Cooper's right about you. You're the one who set me up for that comment to say about Pat Cooper telling me those stories. I never do it. What are you talking about? You tell me 
the stories about your con- phone conversations with Pat. You were mad at Pat because Pat did something that you didn't like. And, and I just told you what it was. Who told me what it was? Exactly. <laughs> I told you I told you something Pat did, and then you decided so not you to like it. Me up and oh, boy. Mad at me. All right. Let's boy oh boy. All right, let listen, we gotta call an end to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I'm Ike and you're Tina, for Christ's sake. Like, I'm beating you. What? Like, I'm beating you into no, thinking no, no, something. No, 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 you, That's a wrong analogy. You have your own thoughts. That's a bad analogy. You have your own thoughts. Bad analogy. Nobody Did I make you bad think it? Bad analogy. Did I make you think it? See you on the show tomorrow. <laughs> Who this? Cash app, dollar sign, milk, crate, marauder. Uh-huh. Venmo, at milk, crate, marauder. <laughs> you stupid bastard.